hi you guys i'm so excited to be back here i'm just gonna go ahead and get right into it um life has lifed for me since 2020 and i've gone through a myriad of change and growth and healing and um it has made me realize that i know a lot more than i have given myself credit for and god has been dealing with me about that and been telling me like i've given you some revelation about certain things that you need to share with people so i'm here to do that i'm going to share with you guys a lot of different things that i've learned um just about life in general and yes we'll go from there um this is just a conversation imagine me as your big little sister auntie cousin um uh, best friend uh, co-worker who has a lot of sense I look cute too <laughs> and um yeah so let's just go back just a tad bit 2020 i started my youtube and at first i just was so i felt so all over the place because um i'm into fashion i'm into the arts meaning writing and singing i'm into cooking i, I was really into fitness at that time um and I was trying to figure out how to put all of those together on this channel. Um, and so what ended up happening was I got overloaded, um, system overload, okay? And I just stopped. And how many of you all know, how many of you all know that overwhelm and procrastination are agents of the enemy, they will literally cripple you and stop you from getting the word out or the content out that is needed to be out for someone's healing. Um, and that happened to me early in early 2020. My sister had passed um, April the 9th, and it was very traumatic for me. It was so traumatic that I really didn't cry for the first year, I think, because I was just so confused. And... Um, like so overwhelmed with grief because my mother passed back in 2018 um and so i just couldn't believe that god would um take my only sister you know like for real god like we already lost mom and my mother passed from a stroke and it was random like one day after work started having a stroke and she went into the hospital and stayed in for a week and then passed. And I graduated high school, what, five months later? And then three months after that, I was in college. I went to FSU, go knows. Um, I graduated 2018. My sister was diagnosed with heart disease in 2016. So when I graduated, I felt extremely compelled to move back home to Atlanta to be with my dad, my sister, and her then eight-year-old son. Um, right? Sammy was eight at that time? Something like that. Yeah, he was eight. Exactly, because I moved back in 2018. Um, and then fast forward to April 2020, or January 2020, my sister gets put on hospice. Now me, my dad, and my nephew are her main caretakers. And um, basically the caretaking is just upped by times 10. And then fast forward, she passes in April. And we all know that April was the height of COVID at that point. We were all home. So I started my YouTube channel um, down in... 2020 I think around my 25th birthday and um I was so back and forth about what to do like how am I gonna do it because people were telling me I needed to niche and I needed to do 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 I needed this blah, 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 boom, blah, blah, boom. and it got so overwhelming that I just stopped like there was a point where I was making music uh, 
I'll put links to the videos. Cause I was, we'll see if I can like link them, but this is going to be a simple video. Okay. Um, there was times where I was singing. I started writing my own music and not that that's not towards my purpose because it is, but it just wasn't what I really want to do. Like, I'm not trying to be in, um, a recording artist like that. I like to sing backup for people um like my favorite types of artists but i'm not trying to be um an artist like that uh not really i mean i don't mind but anyway i'm getting to a point <laughs> um i was making music and putting it on here i was putting affirmations on here i was doing travel vlogs and um music reviews, things like that. And I was just like, man, after doing that, I was like, do I really want to do these things? Like, what? And I wasn't getting that much traction. I wasn't that consistent. It's not like I was dropping a music bit, um, a music review um, every other week, you know, and then a travel vlog once a month and all that kind of stuff. But as I was growing and going through all that grief, I started realizing like, I don't have the capacity to share all of this, to me, unnecessary information. Because once I stopped YouTubing um, consistently, I realized that I was on YouTube watching a lot of videos about self-help, about healing through trauma and grief, about how to make six figures, about how to get out of debt, about, you know, so I just started looking up things that would help me improve. I started listening to more prayer and watching more sermons. Like if you look at my YouTube timeline, all you're going to see is something about how to improve my life. And so I realized I'm like, I don't think I want to just be putting random content out like that. Like, I'm not a random girl. Nothing about my life has been random. It felt like my sister passing was random because I wasn't prepared for that. It felt like my mom passing was random because I wasn't prepared for that. But when I tell y'all, like, the grief that I've had to heal through because of that, how it's made me a better person is just it's different so my point was procrastination and all of these different things can stop can stop you from getting a word out that can heal people that can inspire someone and that can let someone know like hey you're not alone you are not the only one who even if you're not dealing with grief you're not the only one who's second guessing yourself See, because I was dealing with so much grief and because so much stuff was going... Y'all see this? Because you know what? I was going to act like it wasn't that little piece of hair. That's my little hair. She decides she want to pop out. Go ahead, sis. Go. Trying to be a distraction, you see? Because the enemy already know I be getting aggravated and I'll stop this whole thing and just go sit down. But I'm not doing that. I'm going to get this word out. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, I started being overcome by my grief for a while. Started really pitying myself, feeling a type of way because, you know, it's just not fair. Like, God, how, when I was a child, I was serving you. Like, I gave you my entire piggy bank when I was five years old. I was in ministry from 11 years old to 18 years old, serving serving every Sunday. I'm talking about, and I served in multiple ministries regarding the arts. I was in the choir. I did drama. I danced. Um, I helped with production. Um, I volunteered. I was a part of the community service um, initiatives. And I helped my mom because she was in the health ministry. So, you know, whenever we were doing blood drives at the church, I'll go to a mega church. I'll go to Newburgh. Um, and, you know, I was very, very active in the church my entire adolescent life. And my family was very, you know, straightforward. At least my mother really was. I'll have to write a book about my life, y'all, so you can get the gist of everything. But um, <laughs> it was just like, God, how in the world could you take our, our matriarch? 
then to do it with my sister like my sister never had heart disease she got diagnosed in 2016 and i'm 100% convinced that it was as a result of a broken heart. My sister had a learning impediment and she depended heavily on my parents' um, support. And I believe that my mother's passing was too much for her. And I think that she wasn't able to uh, express her emotions how she needed to in a healthy way and grieve healthily. Um, and I think that ended up festering and manifesting as a disease in her heart and i think that's what took her out i'm about 100 percent sure that that's what it was um she had been overweight her entire life but um and that could have had something to do with it and then her you know grieving at the same time didn't help but yeah so that was that and as a result of losing my closest family members my sister and my mom are the closest people to me um closest people to me i like was extremely isolated i didn't have the capacity to do anything let alone make a youtube video i tried and i couldn't i had to scale back um when i started seeing that i wasn't getting over like a thousand views i was like it's not for me and then at the same time i wasn't working like that so I'm like, I can't put all this time into making content and I'm broke. Like, how'd I work? Guy, I understand that this could be an income stream, but mm -mm, like I got to I got to pay my car note tomorrow. Like if the YouTube video don't blow up tonight, then and then at the same time, I hadn't even gotten into the point where I know and really understand um principles of manifestation um and my prayer life was absolutely um just dwindled it had it had dwindled significantly i was angry at god 2020 to about to about 2022 to be completely honest i was angry because i was just like um look Okay. First my mom. That was ma that was a major devastation. Now my sis though, my sister though. My sister though. Um and so what I'm saying is I was so overwhelmed with grief that it stopped me from what's the word I'm looking for from defining what it was that I would do when I got here. But I believe personally, I believe that after I stopped for this time, I think that was all God because you guys, I went from at the top of 2021, I realized that I needed to heal that it wasn't that I just needed to heal from grief. I realized I needed to heal from limiting beliefs from a childhood trauma from generational trauma from self-doubt insecurity um comparison um i realized i had to heal from body dysmorphia babes and i believe that the reason why i had to stop was because i hadn't acknowledged that i needed to heal like that and I was afraid, I, well, I won't say I was afraid to, I just hadn't acknowledged that I needed to. And once I acknowledged that I needed to, like, heal one thing, more and more things started revealing themselves. <laughs> it's like everything just started getting revealed. And I was like, okay, so I swore I loved my body and I swore I loved how I looked. But when I was really into fitness and all of that, I lost 65, 70 pounds.